In season five of Billions, Axelrod wants to become a bank. He's trying to get a license. He has to take down a community bank. It's all hard work. And that's because of Chuck, of course. But it could be a blessing in disguise. Ax and Wags, they think they're going to be protected by the government while continuing their hedge fund activities because they bought a bank. It's a dream. It's not a reality. They're ignoring what happened after 2008. Banking today means complying with the supervision of the Federal Reserve, the Treasury, the OCC, the FDIC, without being bailed out. In a previous video, we saw the limitations in terms of what Axe Capital could do with a bank. So what could he do instead? You ever get tired of working for a living? Every damn day. You. He loves to invest. You? No. He no longer loves being a hedge fund manager with the hassle and scrutiny. Until today. There is a simple solution. Getting out of the hedge fund business, returning about a billion dollars to clients. This is what George Soros did in 2011 when he closed his quantum fund. The 80-year-old stock picker says tighter regulations have forced him to focus on managing assets for his family only. Soros famously made a billion dollars in 1992 for betting that the UK would have to devalue the pound. If you follow Billions, you may know that Bobby Axelrod is inspired by Steve Cohen, a hedge fund manager. In 2013, his firm SAC pleaded guilty to insider trading. He had to stop managing outside money for two years. It was then converted in a new company, Point72, where clients can now invest. Or Bluecrest in 2015. At the time, it was one of the world's largest hedge funds. These managers didn't stop investing. They carried on as a private firm or family office. A few years later, we found Michael Platt. In the world of finance, I'm the highest earning person in the world in finance. Who couldn't stop himself from boasting to a taxi driver in a video that became viral. You're the highest what? Earning person in the world in finance. Wow. In the world. So explain that to me. So I'm a hedge fund manager and I've transformed my fund into a, a personal investment vehicle because we made such high returns. So Axel Roll could be doing the same. The 10 billion crew. Close down, manage your own money. So what are the benefits of this setup compared to a fund structure where you get client funds, management fees, performance fees? Well, you get 100% of the upside. There's a lot less scrutiny. You don't have to find clients or stress about redemption risk. It's very doable. But it also means shrinking the activity, avoiding the public eye, and kind of admitting defeat against his enemy. Do you think it works with Axis personality? I don't pretend I'm an ordinary guy got lucky. I am a monster. I don't. So what can we advise to keep the full upside while changing the nature of the business? We want to move away from the traditional hedge fund model, the one that's used by Bluecrest or 0.72. On the other hand, there's Warren Buffett. He's a legend, but really not an inspiration for Axelrod. But he's the one that will help us find a solution here. You really want a business, and everybody wants a business that doesn't take any capital to speak of and keeps growing and doesn't take more capital as it grows. Now, our utility business, our energy business requires more capital. Warren Buffett started his career as an investment manager. For about 12 years, he was very successful at it and getting fees. And then he closed the company and returned the money to investors. But he had already taken control of a company called Berkshire Hathaway, the company he's known for today, and it's not classified as an investment company. The name actually comes from a textile business, which is a bit confusing, but Buffett transformed it into a conglomerate, and you can see the foundation of his business empire at the bottom of the page here. The only company listed on the homepage is Geico, an insurance company. Insurance is pretty straightforward. As a general matter, there are only two reasons for buying insurance. Uh, one is to protect yourself against a loss that you are unable or unwilling to bear yourself. So why is it so precious to Buffett? Insurance companies collect premiums and they have to pay out some of it later, depending on what happens to the customers. It creates what we call a float. We really don't want to insure someone for a loss that they can afford themselves because if, if we're doing that, uh, it may be because they're dumb, but it may be because they also have a loss expectancy that's higher than the premium we're charging, which is not what we're trying to do in business. There are premiums flowing in, claims flowing out daily, but in aggregate, 
a float has a very long duration. The cost of the float, it can actually be negative if the insurance business turns a profit. So with insurance float, you can have permanent capital with a negative interest rate. Because insurance uses the kind of assets we would like to own anyway, our insurance business doesn't really take capital. It requires having capital available, but we're able to invest that money largely in things we'd like to own anyway. So we're particularly well suited for the insurance business. For Buffett, this is not just a great investment tool. And it's really been the most important factor in our growth over the years, although a lot of other things contribute. It is the key to his success, according to some research. It looks like the majority of his performance as an investor comes from his use of float, permanent capital, with a negative interest rate that is applied to his excellent stock picking skills. And that explains largely Buffett's performance. This looks like a good idea that can work well for someone like Axe that can really manage risk and have great benefits for the company. Buffett started it, but we actually can find many hedge funds that are already using the strategy. David Einhard and Dan Lobb of Sears Point are two recent examples, but they're both having a quite a hard time right now. The reference that we will pick for our friend Bobby is Apollo Global Management. Assets under management up 146 billion. Record profits, 92 billion of deployment. A massive listed alternative investment fund that started as a private equity firm. And they seem to be doing really well. What is it? So how did they get into the insurance business? Like the rest of the industry, they were in trouble after the global financial crisis. It was hard to impossible to raise funds. So Apollo started buying liabilities and eventually set up an insurance business, Athene. The annuities provided Apollo with a float. This in the background is a quirky ad for Athene. It doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, on top of the float, Athene was listed as a separate business. And it kept a minority stake, but with significant control. The listed insurance company kept paying a large chunk of fees. It's like a double dip for Apollo. It IPO'd an independent business and kept receiving big fees. So if I can make a recommendation to Axe... You have two minutes. That will be it. Stop thinking about the bank. Set up an insurance company instead. To start, you don't need to ask permission from anyone. Just start buying annuities from other insurance, for example. There are some fascinating things taking place. FinTech revolution, democratization of finance, as well as changes in the investment marketplace, which you noted uh, in the outset. All of that is just an amazing backdrop to run and guide a firm uh, in the alternative asset industry. What it means is that people will send you their money as premium for risk they are unwilling or unable to bear. Their pets, their home, their life, their business. They don't care about how you do it. You can invest in anything you want. And you can see Athens has an unusual portfolio. You can put complex derivatives, short strategies, illiquid private equity. There's no restriction when there were so many with the bank. And it's been really good for Apollo. You can see its growth compared to its competitors. Perhaps not so good for Athene, which is pretty flat. In fact, to finish the story, there were complaints from other shareholders that Apollo was extracting too many fees out of Athene and there was a conflict of interest. To stop that conflict, they had to merge the two companies this year and simplify the voting structure. So no more double dipping, but still the permanent capital. In fact, the structure looks a bit more like Berkshire Hathaway. So here's a summary of my pitch to Axe comparing bank and insurance. But the big picture for Axe is about moving to a different league. When I compete, oh, I'm going to win. Game's not over, buddy boy. That means moving away from the world of traditional hedge funds like Steve Cohen and Point72 and move closer to the model of giants like Apollo. It's about transforming into a global alternative investment manager covering the whole spectrum of alternatives with a diversified funding base. So in order to get there, Axe needs to follow the inspiration of Warren Buffett, even if it's not his style. With the funding structure of Buffett and the skills of a Steve Cohen, he could really crush the competition. All right, my friends, season five is starting again on September the 5th, and I'm super excited about it. I hope they stop that banking nonsense, that they innovate the right way and build a meaningful, sustainable business for Axe Capital. Thanks for watching and subscribing. 
please check out the description. There's my course on alternative investing. There's the Discord community where we can chat. There's podcast links and all the sources used in the video.